so I think I should be in there. So my name is Jeff. Hi, Jeff. I'm Brad. Brad? My brother's name is Jeff. All right. Pleasure All right. To meet you. Good to meet you. Yeah, so you had 30 seconds to think about it for the camera. I'll say the question again. Sweet. What do you think happens after this life? After this life? Um, I think that we are experiencing each other in a positive way. Uh, God experiencing himself through us in our actions that we bring out into the universe. Um, mm -hmm. I think we are all energy. We are all, uh, in that regard, going back to where we came from. And we may not be here any longer, but our body is, and we give back to the earth from once we came, and nothing goes to waste. Uh -huh. um, everything is re reabsorbed in some form or fashion, in another life form. Yeah. Um, what's after this? Who knows? But I think there is a lot more after this than we know. Okay. So, um, so you, so I'm trying to think, so coming from the Christian, you know, like Bible perspective, I'm trying to figure out like what you would agree with that and what you would disagree. So what I'm hearing is you do believe in God. I'm guessing that your idea about God is probably different from what the Bible would present. Uh, it sounds like you believe that you have a spirit or oh, yeah. something separate from your body, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, but I'm wondering if the similarities end there. So do you feel like you have consciousness yes. uh, after you die? I, I believe so. Uh -huh. I believe so. Yeah. Like, Brad will be Brad. <laughs> now, I don't know if you'll have the same name. Recollection but, of everything else, I think we carry yeah. it with us, whether we know it or not. Um, but I think we're here to learn lessons yeah. uh, that make us better and grow. Um, yeah. okay. And what we do in this planet reflects on who we are and what we did in the past um, yeah. for, I guess, reincarnation, if you would, but not necessarily in the religious aspect of it. Um, like you're not a Hindu or... No, exactly. There's <laughs> various levels of that. Um, right. But no, I think that uh, we are here for our own reasons that we don't know, but we have to be ourselves. Yeah. A lot of people are hiding who they are and covering it up with certain actions and events that they do to suppress who they are. They don't face it head on and tackle the adversity that they have inside of them. Yeah. Do you, do you feel like you're in touch with who you really are? Like, and, and I guess, I'm guessing you do. For the most part. Um, and, then, now and I'm wondering how you do that. Do. <laughs> oh, that's, that's a good question. Yeah. Um, you know, life isn't always easy and you can either face it or run away from it. Mm -hmm. um, and the more you run, the more you don't feel who you truly are. Um, I've faced a lot of adversity in my life uh -huh. um, and overcome what I was able to. Um, so there's that. Yeah. Um, it's all about perspective, too. Um, how you frame things. You know, it's easy to look at the negative and how things affected you. Yeah. Um, but you can also spin it in a positive light. Out of every negative, there has to be some little inkling of positive. Something you can learn from Not there. necessarily right now, not necessarily for you, but somebody yeah. else can learn it from you as well. Yeah. Your experience can be passed on and, oh, that's just that and the other thing. Yeah, that's one one yeah. aspect I think I'm relearning about, say, Western Christianity, is that it's not all about you as an individual. Like, if God is working in our lives, he's to say he's not doing it for the benefit of someone else, you know, like... The butterfly effect. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You, you may not know it, you are part of a bigger puzzle. Yeah. Um, and we may think we know ourselves, but we probably truly don't. But we learn more and more each day. And yeah. more other interactions like this. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And you don't know if you don't ask, you don't know if you don't talk. Today's society is very connected, but we're so disconnected from each other. You know, everyone's looking for the thumbs up or the like. Yeah. But you say hey to someone in the aisle way, get away from me, you know? I don't like, get too many likes on these videos to sure, be to, yeah, to no. be honest, but um I do feel like I, I wanna set a good example that we don't you know, like we don't have to have like deep conversations online um only. You know, like sure. that we can actually We put a talk. screen up in front of our face and we don't have that interaction. You make eye contact with someone a little too long, that's awkward. It's weird. It's yeah. like but we're used to yeah and i fear for the next generation i, I feel like they're all, they're becoming socially awkward and don't know how to handle you know 
face-to-face -face inter interactions uh, yes. because they're online so much. And that goes to facing your face head on. A lot of people will hide behind the screen, you know, can't have a conversation with someone. And now a mask. Oh, yes. I'm a school teacher, so, okay. so I actually have a lot of students who are any are socially awkward anyway sure and so now they're even though masks aren't required they're keeping them on Interesting. and they're hiding behind them and some of them even have go so far as to have a hood so, oh, wow. so yeah, it's just, just like eyes, yeah. yeah um and it's may not notice it right away but that affects yourself over the long run yeah. i mean do it for a little while what have you sure but then that becomes you right? yeah. so you become what you do yeah. essentially with anything that we do you want to be a great athlete you're going to work out it you want to be not are you going to be a pro 50 50 shot you don't know if you don't try you got to take the first step and right. um, just <laughs> let it go naturally yeah now your idea about god what how would you describe god like uh that's why i'm thinking it might be a little different uh, it could be do you, do you yeah when i say god what, what do you think of I mean, well i think he's i think he's within us all and he uh -huh. works within us um he's all ever present um, whether that's a one person being or all of us as a collective whole um, we may be God experiencing himself through us through our actions and things we do yeah um, because without consciousness there's no there's nothing you know if, I, if you're not an observer there's nothing to observe right yeah. um, so like the um, I don't know how deep you want to get into it but the wave particle duality if you're not observing the particle of light it's a wave if you observe it it's a it's a it's like a pinpoint. Uh, do you know that or no? I haven't heard that? it put that way. Okay, the double slit experiment? No, I don't okay. know about that. Um, if there's no observer, um, the, and you're sending photons of light out, waves of light. I, I actually have re recently read something about that, but I don't. I think it kind of went over my head. Uh, <laughs> and, in simplest form, if someone's looking at it or something observes it, it's uh, a pinpoint. Uh -huh. Like throwing a dart at a dartboard. Yeah. If you know, no one observes it, it's a wave of light. It's really interesting aspect to look into. Um, so are, then the question is, does it know it's being observed? That's the thing. You know, how does it know <laughs> when it is being observed? What right. is it? Without an observer, the universe is not existing. Yeah. So I think we're here for a reason, you know, and it is huge. Now, when I ask about God, so, so you're talking about the you know, God's in the maybe the collective, you know, of our. Would you say that there's a difference between, say, creator and creation? Like, in other words, so the Christian idea is that you know that we didn't always exist; that God brought us into existence. He put eternity in our hearts, so we're going to exist forever. But there was a point in time when we didn't exist. Mm -hmm. Whereas God would be eternally you know future and past like God has always existed and is the creator that brought everything else into existence mm -hmm. and so to say so the I guess the Eastern view would be that the creator is part of the creation like or the you know like creator and creation are are together it's called pantheism okay never and um, and so so yeah so which which begs the question does that mean God's in evil is God is you know evil is part of God the bad things in life are are also God you know like there's questions you know that that raises and it does <laughs> um, so uh, and with that I think you have to have good and evil so you can experience the, each one you know to know what to do what not to do yeah. and experience it both you know we've, we were given free will to make our own choices uh, and just like the good without the bad mm -hmm. you can't appreciate the good times if you don't have hard times if it's yeah. all good easy easy i mean yeah. that's cool easy sailing the whole idea behind good and evil you know is that did god originally it originate evil and it's more like it's more like evil is the absence of light or absence of good you know, in the kind of the same way a shadow exists because it's the absence of light. You know? so, so it's not that God created evil, but their evil does serve a greater good than if there was no evil, if that makes yes, sense. Yes, and that goes back to what I said before. Is <laughs> you can learn from it. And, there's little things, even yeah. in the most down times, that you can grab something from it and learn from it. Yeah. Um, so that kind of comes full circle. Because I, I do mean a lot of, like, say, atheists who would say, well, 
how can why would a good God make evil you know, well, all or the time, bad things happen? All the time, sure. Yeah. yeah, and that's just a cop out. Yeah, you know, I think in my own opinion. Yeah, but um, you have they, to. They, it's like a gotcha. You know, yeah, push. absolutely. There's a lot of them, <laughs> and you know, we can get hung up on the little, little things like that, or we can address it and move on. Yeah. Like okay, so why would you let bad things happen to good people? Yeah. Right. Well, if we don't learn from it. Bound to repeat. It. Yeah. Now, did you grow up with a church background, a Christian? I did. I did. Yeah, yeah. Went to Catholic school, uh-huh. so graduated. Um, so I learned the teachings, and I believe that you can learn a lot from all aspects of religion, and they all kind of come from the same place. Yeah. Um, they just tell you different ways to go about getting to the same end result. Yeah. Usually. Yeah. Yeah. I I find that like if we look at the and, and I met. Did you go to like high? Catholic high school too? No, I public school. Public oh, okay. School. So I got a little bit of both. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, like, a lot of people I talk to that have gone to a Catholic high school at least, or maybe even a Catholic college, mm-hmm. you know, university, have had, they're pretty good, I think, about teaching world religions. You know, like, they don't just teach about, so most Catholic high schools will teach. So do you feel like you've studied it? Most world religions? Have you, have you, have you pursued religion? Pursued, no, but absorbed yeah. and learned along the way, yes. Uh-huh. Um, so you kind of have an open, interest open. in it? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Because, again, it's more than just what we are, and the more we're here to learn. Yeah. So always yeah. learn every day, something new. Yeah. It doesn't have to be everything, just something. Yeah. Well, on that note, um, so I'm, I'm, I guess you. I guess people would try to typecast me as, say, a fundamental Christian or a conservative Christian. I'm not Catholic, I'm Protestant. Okay. Um, really try to stick with what the Bible teaches and, you know, and it, as a whole, you know, not just like certain oh, sure. parts of the Bible. Sure, sure. Yeah. Um, and, and so, you know, like, this is hard to hear, but it would say that, that there is a God who has... Uh, given all us, all of us a sense of morality, you know, and we're accountable to that. And the problem is we've broken it. So even just as Adam and Eve broke the one rule that they knew they should keep, we have many rules, Ten Commandments, for example. We know it's wrong to steal, and yet I've stolen. I know it's wrong to lie, and yet I've lied. You know, we, we know we have this inner referee in our head, the, our moral conscience or our moral compass, you know, that, that the Bible says is God-given that holds us accountable and so on, the, you know, so that there is a day of judgment where we will have to give an account and uh, I fall short and really the Bible says we all would fall short. Oh, absolutely. Um, and so, so then how can we have a right relationship with God if, if God is you know, loves people but also loves justice and there must be a consequence or a punishment for our wrongdoing, where does that come out? You know, how can, so, so it talks about uh, righteousness, right? How can we be right with God, have a right relationship with our Creator? Um, so just, just for you, Brad, if you were standing before God, it's Judgment Day, what do you think you would You'd be guilty or innocent? What, what do you I think? I think we're all say? guilty. Um, I think you're right. <laughs> absolutely. There's no question about it. Whoever goes with a high virtue is probably incorrect. Yeah. Uh, and he will have a lot to atone for. Yeah. Um, but now, you know, it also says Jesus died on the cross for our sins. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's that. And um, what do they call that? Um, when you uh, recant all your sins? Uh, repentance. Repentance, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, there's that, and if you yeah. truly believe, and wherever two or more gather in my name, we'll be there. Yeah. Um, so now, do you have to go to church every Sunday to be a good person? No, as long as you keep them within your heart, and just like you, you're bringing it with you wherever you go. Yeah, I'm trying to set that example too, yeah. <laughs> and it's it's within us. What we do is who we are, and we become what we do. Yeah. Um, so... I think it also goes back to if everything, if everyone was righteous, it wouldn't be, there wouldn't be really justice because everyone's the same. You need to break break rules and break the law to know not to do that or see examples of oh that's wrong, or so if I if I take this so what it's insured, someone's paying that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean yeah they they pay insurance for that but yeah. okay it all comes down on us all. Yeah. And. You know, cool, I got a $40 item, cool, but now everyone's paying more for that. Yeah. Yeah, the Bible talks about, like, uh, 
so God does give us his rules and and they were given after Adam had already broken the first one you know like the Ten Commandments and everything like that and then there's the good we ought to do that we don't do you know that too and so then what's the purpose or is he just trying to make us more guilty and in the New Testament it says well the purpose of the law is to show us basically show us our need for a savior that we can't save ourselves so so and then for me as a Christian once I became a Christian and received the, the forgiveness that God has for us in Christ then it was like well how should I respond to what this wonderful thing God has done for me okay I'm going to follow Jesus said if you love me keep my commandments mm -hmm. you know and so then the Ten Commandments become a way to show our gratitude you know to, to live out the, the life that he wanted for us Correct. you know but I can't go back and undo the bad things I've already done. I'm already guilty. So where does the, the punishment, where is the justice? That's what Jesus did on the cross. So like you said, Jesus died for our sins. Mm -hmm. Real quick, I, I do want to say church can't save us, but what I do find out in all these conversations is that the further people are from church, the more they drift away from remember you know like maybe they grew up in church or whatever the more they drift away from realizing I can't be righteous on my own I do need a savior and so more people drift towards I think I can be a good enough person I don't even need church you know I, I can kind of save myself is sure. basically sure but now I don't necessarily think you need a savior but a community helps you know if you strength in numbers and yeah. everyone kind of bolsters each other up you know good yeah. days bad days hard days and also a habitual habit. Hey, how's it going? People checking in on you. It helps your mental well-being. Yeah. Um, and yeah. I guess when I say church, said. I would say it's like regular teaching from the Bible. Okay. Like there's, so the church I go to really emphasizes. Let's. I mean, it's it's not like a 10-minute little word of encouragement. It's a 45-minute sure. teaching. You know. Yeah, that's like a usual mass, right? About an hour. 45 minutes teaching. Yeah, well, the teaching an and then, yeah, a little worship before and after yeah. and that oh, sort yeah. of thing. But um, it, it, the Bible talks about we drift, we can be, we can become uh, a go adrift in our faith and then become shipwrecked. It actually actually says. Sure. And so it's like if we drift far enough from the truth, then then we're in for a, a crash basically. And so hearing the the Bible preached regularly reminds me oh yeah i can't save myself you know because it's i think it's our human nature we just want oh, yeah. to be able to efficiency you know yeah. we can do it on our own but yeah. there's a lot of outside forces good and evil and everything else in between that are we experience every day yeah and we experience it so often we become numb to it yeah and it's just like okay sure. just another thing happened okay wow and you don't have that teaching and belief to learn from but there are a lot of good teachings from the bible um, yeah I'm not a Bible aficionado. I don't know too much about it, um, certain aspects of it, but I think it was a health guide, a health and mental well-being guide mm -hmm. for the whole time. Like, take these lessons and learn from it. There are reasons that you should do X, Y, Z. Um, and now people look at it today as in a different light than it was originally intended for. Mm -hmm. um, was it written by God? I don't think the one we have, I don't think so, because King James came through and he picked certain aspects of books and what have you to put together to comprise the Bible. Mm -hmm. um, again, their teachings um, and to make us a better person and to ideally get us to where we need to be in the end. Yeah. In a, in a whole. Yeah. Well, I appreciate the conversation. Yeah, you're welcome. So you said you're an electrician? Correct, yes. So I'm, I'm actually retiring from teaching and doing house renovation. Nice. And um, really discovering the joy of... Uh, of audiobooks. Oh, okay. Like while I'm doing physical labor, sure. you know, listening, it's, and, it's and I skill. do listen to the Bible too. So, okay. so uh, I want to encourage you to, to know there are, you know, you probably know this, but a lot of Bible apps mm -hmm. come with audiobook versions yes. and you can be listening while you're working. So, yes. um, just encourage you to take advantage of that. I know? did a while ago. <laughs> um, we got to the book of Genesis. That was pretty good. Um, and then... <laughs> Uh, so, 
you know, big names confounding. And going back, it's interesting aspects of names and lineage and the tie-ins together. Yeah. And it's kind of hard to follow the who's who of what's going on. Yeah. Um, but true. as long as you take the big picture away, and with audiobooks, you really, I really need to not hyper get some commentary but, maybe but so listen because yeah. if i'm driving or whatever oh, and yeah. i'm paying attention to the road i guess like, yeah that snap. might be oh, true because i a little bit. like i'm so familiar because it's been a regular habit my whole life that now it's at the point of being reminded of what it says mm -hmm. rather than hearing it you know not being familiar with it and hearing it sure that makes sense sure so, oh, yeah, it says. yeah i'm i'm just excited because i, I always feel like i can read the more <laughs> Now I've discovered so there's this uh, through the Bible in like eight months. You're, reading, <laughs> nice. you're hearing ten chapters a day from wow. various points, and actually it, it even goes back over some of the you know there's parts of the Bible you want to read more uh, than others, you know, that are sure. more important yeah. than oh, others. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so it does a good job of uh, of that. So so I'm really enjoying that. That's excellent. <laughs> nice. So. Well, I will uh, send you the information, okay. uh, or no, I'll give it to you. And cool. uh, yeah, you live around here? Or? I do, Grange Park. Oh, okay. I grew up in Oak Park. I live in downtown, south side of Chicago. Okay. And uh, but that's my um, YouTube channel. Excellent. Right there, and uh, you might enjoy it. And I, with each conversation, I try to write something, um, you know, in the video description. Mm -hmm. um, Something that stuck out to me, you're, you're limited in how many characters you can use, you know, okay. but uh, so you might want to check some of those out. And I'll, I'll post this video soon within a few days and then it'll probably take me a week or two to think of what to write for it. Sure. Interesting. So, well, yeah, I look forward yeah. to it. Yeah. Um, and you don't know if you don't ask, you know, you meet someone on the street and you just bring up a question and yep. what's the worst they can say? No? Can yeah. Walk oh, I've been very pleasantly surprised you know as long as i find someone who's got a little time mm -hmm. sometimes That's i even ask people yeah. you know i ask people like even in a coffee shop i'll if someone's working on their computer I, i'll say real quickly this is what i'm doing and then you know some people like a little study break so would you would you be interested in very often people say okay you know sure so and they look busy but they and you know oh, you yeah. get to break from your normal day and i've learned so much from people of so many different backgrounds eyes so. open ears open i love it i say mouth <laughs> shut but here we are right <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well good, fantastic. To, Jeff, good to meet you yeah. good to meet you all right thanks well, take care be safe and yeah yeah, yeah i'm